Hey guys, what's going on? The Comics Kid 2099 here, and welcome to day two of my 365 day challenge where I'm going to be reviewing one graphic novel every day for this entire calendar year. Today, I wanted to talk to you about another book that's kind of sort of in line with the DC Comics Earth 2 world of characters. Yesterday, I talked about Infinity Inc. Today, I'm going to be talking about Sandman Mystery Theater, Volume 1, The Tarantula. This is the first four issues of Sandman Mystery Theater. It is uh, written by Matt Wagner and drawn by Guy Davis. Uh, recently, DC Comics, they started reprinting this series, and uh, Book 1 uh, collects the first 12 issues of Sandman Mystery Theater. Uh, so if this sounds interesting to you, you might just want to skip the older trades and just go straight for the reprints that collect more issues. Uh, if you are interested in the superheroics of DC Comics from the 1940s, the Justice Society, All-Star Squadron, uh, all the characters from Earth 2, if you're interested in the superhero side of things from that world, this isn't exactly for you. Uh, this is taking a character from Earth 2, uh, the Sandman, and it's basically placing him in the real world. Uh, the threats that he faces in this book, they very much feel real worldy. Uh, they don't really feel super heroic. This isn't anything like the Ultra Humanite or Solomon Grundy or anything like that. Uh, this is a crazy bad guy who has a mask. Uh, he's kidnapping women and he's killing them, but it's not really a super villain or anything like that. Uh, in fact, the most outlandish thing about this is a guy who wears a gas mask and goes around and he's investigating who is kidnapping all of these women. And other than that, it's pretty grounded. Now, if that sounds good to you, then you will probably really enjoy this book because it is handled very well. I really enjoyed this book, uh, but if you are looking to explore Earth 2 and the 1940s characters from DC Comics, then this might not be for you. Uh, I will say that this series is kind of sort of a spin-off from Neil Gaiman's The Sandman series that started in the mid to late 80s and continued uh, for about 10 years, I think. Uh, in that series, it was revealed that uh, Morpheus, the Sandman, he was held captive for about 70 years or so, starting in the 1930s or 40s, and because of that, uh, Wesley Dodds, every now and then, he sees visions of Morpheus from Neil Gaiman's The Sandman series. And if you've never read that series, this book might be just a little bit confusing because of those visions that Wesley Dodds is getting. Uh, they're very sparse throughout the book. I think there's like three moments where Wesley Dodds is getting these visions, and if you just ignore those pages, then this book is very standalone. It doesn't feel very very connected to the DC Universe because, like I said, this doesn't really feel like it's in a superhero world. It feels like it's in our world in the 1940s. Uh, but other than those couple of pages, uh, it feels very much like its own entity. Uh, just keep in mind that it is very loosely a spinoff of Neil Gaiman's The Sandman. I don't know how much that continues as the series progresses because this is all that I have read from this series. I don't know if uh, Morpheus becomes more of a presence in this series. I kind of doubt it based on uh, him not coming out of his imprisonment until the present day in Neil Gaiman's The Sandman series. But uh, that's really the only thing that I think might be a little bit confusing to anybody who is uh, somewhat of a novice for DC Comics or at least hasn't read uh, the Neil Gaiman Sandman series. But overall, if you are willing to read a superhero book that feels very grounded, very real world, doesn't feel much like a superhero book, if you are not not uh, too disappointed that this isn't an exploration of the Justice Society or a character from the Justice Society. Uh, this doesn't even feel like it's in any way connected to the JSA. If you don't mind that, uh, then I would definitely recommend uh, Sandman Mystery Theater Volume 1. Uh, it's written very well. The art fits it very much. When I saw Matt Wagner's, uh, Matt Wagner's name on the book, uh, at first I got really excited because I love Matt Wagner's art. And then I opened it and it's like, oh, it's written by Matt Wagner. Uh, he is a very talented writer. Uh, but I like him more as an artist than I do as a writer. And that's not to say that Guy Davis is a bad artist, uh, but every time I see Matt Wagner's name on a book, I instantly think, hey, it's drawn by Matt Wagner, and then usually it's not. Uh, but I was hooked immediately. Uh, Guy Davis, his art fits this uh, world and the tone that they're going for very much. Uh, I think that this is a creative team that really knows what they're doing on this story. Uh, so I definitely recommend Sandman Mystery Theater uh, for anyone uh, who is interested in that kind of story. Uh, so that's all I have for day two two of my 365 day challenge. I hope you guys will be back tomorrow uh, to see what other books I'll be talking about. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.